Hey everybody, Patton here. Welcome back to the channel. New HackGCE just released, 3.4.1. Lots of new features. I'm going to go over all of that very shortly. But first, I want to show you how to switch to 3.4.1 if you're using an older version of HackGCE or if you're still using the cluster version of 2.3.1. It is highly recommended you switch from his version to the CE version. That's just not an opinion. I'm not ragging on his version or anything, but even he recommends that you switched. It's right here. Switch to CE. So here's what you have to do if you're on 2.3 or prior of one of Cluster's versions. You're first gonna go into your HackChi folder and then check and see if you have a dump folder. This means that you dumped your original kernel. If you did that, great. It should look something like this. If you're using an SNES classic, it should say SNES underscore kernel or kernel underscore SNES. If you don't have your original kernel dump for whatever reason, you're going to go back into your HackChi folder. Create the dump folder. Then you're going to search for one of these image files. If you just search by one of these names, you should find it no problem. Especially if you find it on a screen that looks like one of these. If you're using an SNES classic, you want it named just like this, kernel.img or kernel underscore SNES.img if you're using an SNES classic. Put the kernel into the dump folder that you created. Then you're going to open up HackGee. Go to kernel, uninstall. If you get this message, it means you don't have your original kernel and you have to do those steps I just said. If you do have the image file in the right spot, you're going to have to go into FEL mode by holding reset and pushing power and then following the directions on your screen and that will return you to stock. You have to do that before moving on to the newer version of HackGCE. Say you're using an older version of HackGCE. Open it up and you should get this pop up right here. HackGCE 2 CE version 3.4.1 is now available. Hit the button right here and that will update you to the newest version of HackGCE. And this was for any future versions. If you're running CE, this automatic updater will always let you know when there's a new version out. So you hit this button. It'll download the update. You'll get a message from the developers, which is Team Shinkansen. So for the newest one, it says there's a hotfix out, which was on August 6th. Um, it is possible HackGee 2 CE may not discover your NES or SNES Mini when you first open up the new version. Give it more time than usual to make sure, maybe a couple minutes. Nothing happens, you need to use the hold reset method, which is entering FEL mode, to update your kernel with the new release. Sometimes you'll get a security alert saying that Windows Defender has blocked some features. You have to allow access. If you're blocking HackGee with your firewall, then you can't run the program. You have to allow access of HackGee or you can't install the drivers. If you're installing the newest version of HackGee and you haven't had any previous versions before, you're just going to download it, go to HackGee EXE, and once again, you get the Windows protected to your PC. Click More Info right here and then it'll give you the option to run anyway. Also, I always recommend installing the debug version. When you install the debug version, you get this nifty window right here. If something goes wrong, you will usually get an error somewhere in this window. Also, if you're installing things or downloading new stuff, it'll show you in real time what's going on with the program. So here's my personal version of CE 3.4.1, the one I've been using on my NES and SNES Classic. You can see I've added a ton of games on here, but one of the differences you'll know just by looking at this version is that the games are separated by system. You'll see I have my Game Boy Advance games, N64, I think I have all of them, Nintendo, we have our RetroArch app, some Dreamcast games, Mega Drive and Game Gear, stuff like that. So I'm gonna try and go through all the features that I personally know how to explain on this newest version of 3.4.1 CE. You'll see up here you have the name of your game which you can change. Don't worry about any of this information right here. It's all cosmetic. If you see that there's zero save counts or that it's one player even though this is a two or you know more player game, that doesn't affect anything. This is just cosmetics as to what shows up on the classic menu. This is just information. You can fill all this out yourself. You'll notice you have the synchronize button which will synchronize games to your SD mod or to your NAND if you're using either of those. If you're using an external USB drive, you would hit the export games. The add more games button will add more games. The new button up here, the structure button, that is for creating folders. And once again, you have these options here. You can disable folders altogether, which is fine if you only have 
maybe 50 games or so, but if you have more than that, you're gonna have to create folders. For you to select any of these options right here in this middle row, you have to have this custom option checked. If you were to hit custom one more time, then the folder manager pops up and you can do everything manually. No folders, original and other games split equally, depending on how many games you have. You split them by first letter or by app type. You still have to select the maximum games per folder. And as you can see here, past 50 is not recommended, so you should stick to at least 45. Usually I think 45 is the max you can really do depending on how many save states you have and not have any errors. And from this option you can choose where the back button is either to the left or the right. You can also choose where the back button is here in the manual folders manager as well as adding a home folder which when selected will take you to the first page of the main menu on your classic system. Alright so let's start here on all these options under the file tab. You can add more games. The new selection here is auto detect or as is. When you select auto detect, it will pick what kind of file you're using. So like for a Super Nintendo game, if it's SMS, it'll automatically change your command line to like SNES 9X. This was a problem before in 1.2.5 when doing arcade games. If you had the Q sound bin in the archive, it would automatically select that bin file and auto detect what system to run it for and this would cause an issue because it wouldn't move the rest of the files in that archive. So for arcade games you want to select as is it will install the entire archive as is and you won't have that problem. So here's one major fix that's been done in the new version. Once again the export games option is here as well. Synchronize is here. If you want to reload Hacksheet you can hit this option here or hit F5. Restore original games will do just that. If for some reason you lost your original games, hitting this option will bring all your original games back. For the kernel install repair, this is the new option to flash the custom kernel to your system. And sometimes if you're getting errors, you hit this option one more time for the repair and then it'll fix those errors. It won't work on every error, but it works a lot of the time. The reset option takes you back to the beginning of your custom kernel before you installed any mods or anything. Using reset will keep the custom kernel on your system without losing any of your games, but you will have to reinstall mods. This is useful so you don't have to keep flashing the custom kernel over and over. It just resets everything back to that first custom kernel flash. Uninstall removes everything, the custom kernel, the games you installed, and the HMODs you installed. This will take you back to stock. The flash U-boot option is for SD card users. For if you got a super storage from Echo 10 and you have it installed, that's what this option is for. You have to flash into SD mode to use that micro SD card with your system. This is not for USB users. It is only for the SD mod users. Don't touch this option unless you can write me a 2000 word essay on what each of these options does do not go in here don't go in this option you will mess up your system if you don't know what you're doing here don't go here if one of the devs are helping you out that's fine you have no business going in here stay out of here don't do it modules tab for CE you have the install extra modules option like we've had before and uninstall extra modules this puts on new cores to your system, this will remove them from your system. But now we have a Hatchy Mod Store. This is one of my favorite new additions to CE. When we open up the Hatchy Mod Store, you are greeted with everything that you could need for your system right here in Hatchy. You don't have to go looking for anything. I love this. So if you're looking for mods for additional functionality, you have the memory boost, save state shortcuts, you have the option menu. How about RetroArch? New version of RetroArch is right here. You don't have to go looking for it. The conversion mod, if you want to change your system into just a RetroArch machine and not do anything with your classics, that's fine. Straight into RetroArch using that option. And then of course you have the cores. And look at this. Now they are in alphabetical order. We had an issue with the last version where they were sorted by release date and it was really hard to find anything. But now they are all in alphabetical order easy to find by system. Game Boy Advance. Here's everything for Game Boy Advance right here. What else are we looking for? Genesis? Right here. How about the Mega Drive? Right there. How about MAME? There's all your MAME cores right here in Hatchy. You don't have to go finding anything anymore. 
The sort button, like I said, you can either sort by date released or by A through Z. You have your USB modules, user interface modules, boot to home H mod, which is integrated into Hackchi now, music hack, video splash screen mod, all right here, easy to get. Then you have your games like the RetroArch standalone app launcher, Prince of Persia, you have Wolfenstein, Doom, a whole bunch of stuff here. I love the mod store. Under our view settings, this just changes how your games look on the interface right here. If you go to the original games option, you can put them at the top, at the bottom, sorted with all your other games, or you can have them hidden. I don't use the original games. All my stuff I run through RetroArch, so that's why I choose the hidden selection. I don't need to see the original games because I've re-downloaded them and I run everything through RetroArch now. You can sort your games by name. So all your games are in one option here by name. They're not separated in any way. That's how it used to be. We used to have to do things like this with every single game in one option. But now you can sort by core or by system. I prefer system. In the settings tab, you can change the language of HackG. The SF-ROM tool. This is for uh, Super Nintendo games on the SNES Classic. Some games aren't compatible with the original canoe emulator, so you have to patch them with this tool. Um, I showed you how to use this in my original hacking tutorial, which will be in the description. So if you want to find out how to use this tool right here, go ahead and watch that video. Separate game storage. This I think is more useful for the SD mod users. Since you can switch between the NAND memory and the SD mod, this will separate your games depending on which you boot up. If you boot up into SD mode, you'll have a separate list of games if you boot up into NAND. Compress games when adding, this will compress your games as you add them. Uh, make sure if you're adding disk games, you don't have this option checked or you deselect this option here because disk games cannot be compressed. They will not work. Compress box art when adding, this should always be checked. There's no reason that you should have this unchecked. It compresses the box art. Makes things smaller, more space for you, more space for games. Disable Hackchi 2 pop-ups. Say like you're flashing the custom kernel or you're adding games, you get that done pop-up. If you don't like that pop-up, enable this option right here. Separate games for multi-boot. If you're using dual boot or multi-boot methods, again, this will separate your games depending on what you have flashed to that system's NAND. So it'll keep your Nintendo games, Super Nintendo, Shonen Jump games, it'll keep all those separate if you have this option checked and it'll only show the games you have that you added to that system. Always copy original games does exactly what it says. It'll copy the original games to whatever system you're using. Using Link Sync. This is good because it'll create a desktop file. It makes it quicker for you to transfer your files to your system when you have this option checked. Instead of moving the whole ROM, everything, it just does like a link to that game. Again, saves space and it saves time when transferring. We have the controller hacks option, which is grayed out for me right now because I don't have my Nintendo turned on. But this is what you would use if you wanted to enable the turbo functions or if you wanted to change the button combination to take you back to the classic menu. The global command line is used for, say you wanted to change the 4-3 ratio and change it to have the uh, bilinear filtering effect or to take out the bilinear filter effect on the CRT, you would put that command line in here and it'll affect all the games on your console. Then you have the option here to disable epilepsy protection. That's where like if things get really bright on the screen, it kind of fades out. I don't know if you noticed that before, but if you have this checked, it will take away that epilepsy protection. It'll make everything like it used to be. And then you have to, of course, hit the save setting button right here to save any changes that you made. Under tools, you have the save state manager. This is what you use to back up your save games. So you can save them to your PC, mess around with your system, and if you mess something up, oops, you can just re-import them, no big deal. You can take a screenshot of HackGCE on whatever screen you're on. Uh, and then you have your open FTP client and Telnet client. And no, the addresses aren't here anymore. I spoke with Princess Daffy and she said she's going to put them back on there to make it easier for the user. Boot Splash, you can change the Boot Splash, disable it, or reset it to default. That's the big green hatch you see when you open up your classic after you flashed it. You can disable it, change it to something else. Reboot, reboot your console. And then they switch running firmware option. This is for those who have dual booting or multi-booting in mind. You open this option up and then you select whichever HSQS file you have on your system that you've synced. And then under the help tab, you can go to Team Shinkansen's GitHub page with the releases, 
a Frequently Asked Questions option. Technical information gives you information about Hackgy, and the About tab gives you information about Team Shinkansen and everybody involved with the project. So a huge thanks to Team Shinkansen for keeping up with CE. Mad Monkey, he's constantly helping them out too, giving his input, helping them with problems that they're having. Everybody over at the Hackgy Resources team doing their job, coming up with new stuff, bug fixes and testing. That's why it's called Hatchy CE. The CE stands for Community Edition. It has everybody's input on it. Everybody has a say in how it runs. If you're having problems with anything related to Hatchy or the classics at all, go to the Hatchy Resources Discord. I'll have a link in the description for you. Everybody there is always willing to help out. I appreciate everybody's support with the channel. It's why I do what I do. It's all because of you guys. So thank you so much again for watching. And I'll see you next time.